and welcome to another episode of The Clever Clarinetist. I'm your host, Dr. Larkin Sanders. Today, I'm really excited to do a quick run-through trial of some brand new inventory that just came to my shop, Royal Globo Clarinets. I'm very excited to try them out and kind of show you um, the differences between the three models I have in stock right now um, and how they kind of stack up to my preferred clarinet or my clarinet in general. So I have um, the Royal Global Firebird Polaris and classical limited B flat clarinets that I'm going to be working with today. I've got my control all set up here. This is my summer Présence B flat clarinet. No real bells and whistles. I'm playing on a Brian Corbin uh, traditional barrel that's 65 millimeters long. And my mouthpiece today is a D'Addario Reserve um, Evolution mouthpiece, not marbled this time. I know, I'm sure some of you have seen the marbled mouthpiece. And then my Silverstein Hexa Ligature in Rose Gold. Um, I have a very well broken in reed uh, as well. It's a dessert. Bleh, bleh, bleh. The Dario Reserve Classic reed. Um, this is kind of my ideal setup for a clarinet playing. Um, so without further ado, I will do my normal trial thing, an F major scale slurred, an F major scale articulated, and then an excerpt from the opening of the Brahms E flat clarinet sedata. Here we go. <laughs> sounds like today. Uh, let's move on to the Classical Limited. Okay, so I've got my Classical Limited all set up, ready to go. Um, so this is a beautiful little clarinet. I actually own um, in my personal collection a Classical Limited clarinet in C uh, that I use a lot with my group Porch Music KC um, because we always have kind of a mismatch of instruments at porch music and sometimes it's just easier to play second violin parts on the C clarinet um, and I really like that instrument I think it's really reliable and it has great intonation and a beautiful sound all good things uh, so I'm excited to see what the B flat version of that clarinet is like um, we've got a the stock barrel that comes with classical limited instruments and also right now in the end of March 2021 if you're interested in buying one of these instruments you get a free barrel or bell with your purchase all right here we go <laughs> limited B flat clarinet was only going to run you about two thousand dollars so it's a really excellent buy and all you know what it sounds great um, this is a really nice little inexpensive option um, for anyone who's looking to upgrade their instrument to a wooden instrument from a plastic one or if you're especially if you're like an amateur clarinetist then your old middle school clarinet is like a little bit tired grandma's closet clarinet is finally kicking the bucket 
this is a great option. Now let's go on to the Polaris. All right, I have assembled my setup on this uh, Royal Global Polaris clarinet. You can see that this one comes with their really cool adjustable barrels um, in silver plating, and this barrel can extend from 64 millimeters to 68 millimeters, so that's really cool. Um, they could be especially handy if you're the kind of person that likes to switch between A flat and B flat clarinets uh, with one barrel. I know for me, I need on my clarinets, uh, I need the barrel to be a millimeter longer on my A clarinet than I need it on my B flat clarinet, so this would be super handy to have that uh, quick adjustment option right there. And what else? There are gold plated um, posts on this clarinet. If you can see, they are quite pretty, a very uh, beautifully crafted instrument. Um, let's see how it sounds. <laughs> distracted me a little bit is that for some reason I feel like these pinky keys are a little bit harder to reach than my Selmer pinky keys. Um, this could be problematic for me because I have like very strangely and disproportionately short pinkies. Uh, playing clarinet is hard enough <laughs> as it is but overall it has a really beautiful sound. They're like I feel like the at least on from here from my side of it from my point of view I heard a lot more like overtones and things like that um, to the point where it, like at first I thought the sound was like hurting my ears a little bit. Um, but that's kind of a cool thing, especially if you're playing for like a bigger group of people in a larger, like soloistic setting, this would be a great option. And this is kind of the mid-range uh, priced instrument and you can totally shop these clarinets on my website at cleverclarinetist.com. Um, you'll find a link below in the uh, description of this video. But overall, I really like it. Um, in general, I like the way this sounds more better than the classical model, but just marginally for me. I think I got a pretty good sound out of both, um, and maybe actually like up close, and if it's just me, I kind of like that compact classical sound, um, but I think this is probably the kind of sound I would want to have when playing in a larger group setting. So let's switch to the, the piece de resistance, the fire. All right, so here I am with the Firebird. This is kind of, um, I think, Royal's claim to fame right now. Um, there are a lot of really cool um, mechanical aspects of this instrument in addition to aesthetic. Check out these rose gold posts. And if you've seen my ligature, you know I'm a sucker for rose gold. Um, in case you didn't know, rose gold is an alloy of um, silver, gold, and copper, kind of all molded together. And a lot of people say that silver things give you a little bit more ping to the sound, a little bit more brilliance, and gold gives you a little bit more warmth and darkness. It's like drinking out a cup of hot chocolate. And I don't know what people say about copper, but to me, I feel like at least the combination of gold and silver together give, um, give you a little bit of a, the best of both worlds. And, and then you add the copper, and at least as far as I'm concerned, is pretty. Um, <laughs> I am sure copper adds something to the sound. Maybe it helps blend those two attributes a little bit better the like the ping and the projection versus the warmth and the darkness um kind of marrying the two things together maybe it's it's like the priest forget it okay and what else there's a really cool vent back here against the register key and that um this opens up when you're playing a throat b flat it's connected to this f ring so if you ever if you're playing over the break this little vent is staying shut but it opens whenever you play throat b flat it's a pretty resonant B flat as far as throat B flats are concerned. Pretty cool. It also has an extra tone hole pad right here. And as far as I can see, 
it is just an extra vent to help your uh, lower notes play a little bit more in tune or any of these like bell tones play a little bit better in tune. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I've noticed. Uh, both Firebird and Polaris also, I should have mentioned, come with this extra E flat, A flat key. So if that's something that's important to you, definitely want to check these out. This option, it does not look like it's available on the Classic. I don't have one of these keys on my Presence clarinets because honestly, when I did have it, I had this key on my Selmer signatures before the Presences and I didn't use it that much. Um, it never got in my way. A lot of people say that they get in, these keys get in their way, um, but my pinky I don't think is long enough <laughs> for that key to get in my way. And I think I used it maybe in the Nielsen Concerto one time. So um, I opted to like work around that one note that I was missing in my repertoire. In the grand scheme of repertoires, it's not a lot. So um, yeah, pretty cool. It has an adjustable thumb rest as well. Same with the other two models. Um, I just can't get over these rose gold, rose gold posts. They're so pretty. Ugh. All right. Oh, and it comes with the uh, adjustable barrel as well. This one is engraved with Firebird on it as opposed to Polaris because typically we see this adjustable barrel and it's the Polaris model barrel. Um, and these barrels separately come in three different platings, silver, gold, and rose gold. Oh, sorry, four. And then the, like the black nickel. Um, I'll have to try out the, do another trial of the barrels later when they come in, but um, yeah, I did it so far. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> the same on both of those instruments and that's okay by the way if you try different instruments and you sound like pretty much the same that actually might speak really well to the instrument makers manufacturing process and the consistency of their manufacturing process so good on royal for sure um what else i noticed uh the keys are laid out just a little bit differently than my seller i'm sure you heard a couple of notes that weren't exactly my best legato work um but i think that's just due to like learning how to navigate this key work um, and getting used to it. But overall, these are excellent clarinets. I'm really excited to have them in my inventory uh, for you to try, in addition to my fabulous collection of Selmer Presence clarinets. Um, so if you're in the market for a new instrument and you want to try something that's maybe a little bit industry disruptive, a little bit different, let's talk about Royal. Um, but not yet. We have to go back to our control because we are good scientists. So let me get my clarinet back out and we'll see how it compared to the other three I just tried. All right, I'm back with my Summer Prizant B flat clarinet. Let's see how it feels now after trying those three royals. <laughs> below. I'd love to hear an outsider's perspective on what just happened. 
Um, I'm so happy that I have so many beautiful instruments to offer you guys. So if you're interested in trying instruments, whether it's Royal, Selmer, both, everything, please reach out to me um, via my website, cleverclarinetist.com or larkin at cleverclarinetist.com. Uh, I can't wait for you to be so ex as excited about your equipment as I am. Um, but until next time, 